Uh, I also thank you for your discovery. My, my PhD was uh, PhD thesis with theory with the uh, quasi crystal, and so it means that the if I don't start, if I didn't study quasi crystal, what's my life will be? It's probably I don't know. But uh, anyway, the to study quasi crystal just bring me to to the interest of the science. And these uh, outlines I arranged about uh, three topics. One is uh, introduction to stable quasi crystal. Probably I will. Uh, make a, a part of my life work when, when I study, uh, study when I was a student until now. And then these two, the second and third part will be the, the, uh, the late, latest development which developed for the last decade. And so I will show a beautiful structure to you. Uh, when it comes to the stable quasi crystal, what we can do with the quasi crystal? Because the stable quasi crystal is guaranteed that we can grow the single grain because it is stable uh, until the mountains. And then the other thing is, if we have stable quasi crystal, it's unable, it's an, uh, enable us to discuss the stabilize, uh, stabilization mechanism. What's a stabilized quasi crystal? So, mainly in these topics, I will talk to of this. So, first, everything started from this. This is a picture. Uh, it's the same composition as the Danish discovers, it's uh, the melt crunching uh, aluminum manganese. So, this is a quasi crystal, and the, the matrix was aluminum. We just use special these uh, solutions to age out and just leave the quasi crystal. It looks like flowers, be beautiful. But uh, the one problem is the, the, the sample, the particle, the, the quasi crystal is too small and to study these uh, in, uh, well, inherent properties of uh, the structure of the sample. So we need a stable quasi crystal. And that's what, what I studied uh, at that, uh, about 25 years ago. And nowadays, we can grow this uh, single quasi crystal in many systems. So, for example, here is this, uh, a slow cooling of the zinc magnesium dispersion. We separate the quartz crystal from liquid, and you get very good shape with this one. And then also we have the can grow by the floating zones. Anyway, now we can grow the single quartz crystal by using that's the process which used in industry, which will grow the uh, semiconductor or something. So we can do anything uh, in quartz crystal. What we have done on crystal, and then. With this uh, stable or single quasi crystal, we, and we, we can get a uh, beautiful structure. So, this is the lower transmission deflections. You see, for long range inside, they have a very beautiful reflections. Okay? So, if it estimate the, the correlation length from these uh, peak width of the deflections, it's roughly approached to close to something uh, like the uh, 3000 Armstrong. So, if we the high res resolution image, so in locals, we can. Uh, draw the different kind of size of the pentagon. It means these uh, lattice do not have a misfit in, in the whole, quite whole regions. So if you, you draw the selective spacings, of course you get the, 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 the arrangement just like a Fibonacci sequence. And this gives the, uh, uh, well, the quasi period structure in, in respect of space two. So that's what we observed in the, the beautiful structure in quasi crystal. And because the, when sample we prepare by the uh, uh, rapid quenching, sometimes the, uh, the strong the disorder of strain will be introduced. And this will be hide that the inherent structure uh, properties of, of the quasi crystal. But, the, but in this the stable quasi crystal, it's something become clear. Uh, now, uh, because not, according to the uh, uh, theoretical, the, uh, there are three kinds of the, uh, the lattice in, 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 uh, in high dimensions, just like the uh, cubic cubic structure in, in three dimensions. We have BCC and FCC and primitive lattice in, even in, in quasi crystal. So uh, <laughs> by, it's just simply by, uh, if you have a good quasi crystal, enough quasi crystal, and just by uh, indexing the, uh, all these uh, reflections, so you get the, the, the sum the O even parity. And it verify that that we have a type FCC quasi crystal and also P, uh, primitive quasi crystal. Now, if we have a large enough uh, sample, then we can study also magnetic scattering. So this uh, example for zinc magnesium uh, hormones, uh, for example, at low temperature, it shows some of the uh, antiferral magnetisms. So by, uh, uh, major, by the uh, neutron scattering, and uh, we just uh, they get the difference at, um, at the different temperatures, and you have uh, these uh, uh, deflections, scattering. So if uh, uh, operating along, uh, just make uh, symmetric uh, uh, operations, and then you will get the, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, magnetic, magnetic uh, uh, speed order with this eicosahedral symmetry, just shown here. Okay, so anyway, 
and uh, the, the, the magnetic short range order is maybe around something like the uh, uh, one nanometers. And of course, for single grain, then we can study a surface. So now, nowadays it's become clear this is a, a, a be the surface of quartz crystal in aluminum copper ion. So then, so now it's the, the features of this uh, five-fold planes is that we have a class-like structure, and then it's five-fold symmetry and of non-periodic step heights. And it's also bug termination. And then similar, this, uh, uh, the image has been obtained in, in Ames or in Liverpool in different places with some samples. So this uh, is something uh, that's become clear. So I will come to back this point later. And so the second part of the first topics is the what, what's the what's the stabilized quartz crystal? And actually, uh, because of the most most of the quartz crystal is still uh, metallic alloys. So we use the criterion which the study uh, in the in met metallurgy. So that one is the called the hemozarite. So they are the hum uh, three criterions. One is the size factor, and the other is the second is the electron negativity. And uh, but this uh, this this that uh, these, these three are all correlated. So why don't we just choose the uh, last one, yes, the, the EO by A, it's valence concentrations. It means the definite structure will be decided by the uh, a definite uh, valence concentration. In here, the valence concentration is mean the, the, the valence of electrons per, per atoms. So use this as a criterion, we, uh, we just uh, to understand why this quasi uh, is stable. And if it works well, we can use the same to, to find, uh, uh, to look for the uh, new, quasi new quasi crystal. So here is a big, uh, the, this is a, a, a some divergence in the, for the uh, transition metals, use of minus b uh, values. But this has been, uh, been used by the Reno in 1949. He, he used this uh, value to calculate the EO by A for, uh, for some uh, uh, intermediate compound, and it works out. Then we use the same values to calculate the, this uh, EO by A, okay? And, but one thing I would like to remind here, you see that only copper ion and this iron, if replaced by ruthenium or osmium, and they all form the same stable quasi crystal. If you look at this, the, these three elements, they locate at the same columns in the periodic, ta periodic table. It means always something that uh, means the, the electron structure has some contribution to this uh, stability of quasi crystal. But anyway, by using this value, we calculate this uh, EO by L, for example. And of course, they, they the same way, we use the same value, and this is the same uh, EO by 1.75. And if this is really true, it's, it could be also uh, available for other alloys. So here, again, I showed here. First, we have iron copper ion with this composition shown here. And the next, we design another, another alloys without the copper or iron or the same osmiums. And then, for example, here, you just uh, design another system, aluminum plating system. You see that the, the composition is shifted slightly. It means just to satisfy that the, uh, the same <coughs> EO by A value. So it's very clear. So this is, we, have, we, we summarize, we understand the stability property from the uh, electron structure. And you use the same criteria to design, to, to, to discover new quasi crystal. Okay, so now again, once you have a new quasi crystal and you do the same thing, and it's, you, you can easily define uh, the new quasi crystal. For example, the, in the zinc magnesium royal system, first that is discovered by the a Chinese colleague in zinc magnesium yttrium. So simply, we just replace uh, in yttrium replaced by other royal system uh, elements. Since the, all these the royal elements have the trivalent, so it, if by the, uh, change uh, change with the different uh, the uh, real ele uh, elements, it didn't change the uh, EO by A, so it still keep the same. So it's the way you have one, then you get the another six. So this is the way what we've done <coughs> so far. And okay, in the systemic uh, start investigation, and we reached to this uh, cadmium ethereum system. And uh, actually, when, you c when I look at look, look the, this, the uh, phase diagrams, and uh, yeah, this is the one the uh, uh, compounds, Cadmium 5.7 and ytrium, and in the this paper as give, uh, as by the uh, uh, Palizonas, in the paper he mentioned that that uh, this this uh, this uh, compound is, is a compound with a very large lattice constant. So and uh, by and then I analyze there is another compound six to one, and because this structure has has been uh, sold, the structure this is crystal, and simply we just analyze analyze the what's this structure looks like. 
So actually, this cadmium-6 yttrium is a, an approximate of quasi crystal. So it has a sex shear uh, uh, class like here, inner shear and the second shear and then uh, third shear and then fourth shear. Okay, so sex. So and this anyway, this the uh, uh, class is arranged in the BCC in the lattice uh, way. So in this way, of course, and then we know this is approximate, and this because there is not a uh, 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 very fine. So we believe that was a quasi crystal. So simply, we just synthesize this alloy and make an investigation by X-ray and electron microscopy, and this was quasi crystal. So this is the uh, simple story. We found this uh, stable binary uh, uh, quasi crystal. And again, okay, so once you have one, so this, you, we play the same games just the, uh, to count, preserve the same EO by A. So in this case, uh, we have two stable binary uh, quasi crystal, cadmium, yttrium, and the cadmium carotene. And because the yttrium is non magnetic, so it has a, a divergent. In this case, so the EO by A, so the, the, uh, you know, the number of electron per atom will be two. Okay? So, and then in this case, we we just uh, uh, change the uh, the elements, so it uh, changed the cadmium replaced by indium and silver. Okay, and indium, as you know, indium is the trivalent, and the silver is molybdenum. So by doing this, we get another new composition here. And again, this also, this is also these, these two are also stable quasi crystal. So similarly, we can also replace by others for the gold and 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 tins with some um, equivalent and still this is quasi crystal. So again, this, uh, the, the uh, result also demonstrates that EO by is a very uh, important the, uh, factor for the stable quasi crystal. And nowadays, so in this system, this uh, pulse is uh, discovered by the Poes Mishmasa's group. And anyway, in this family, this uh, have the same uh, aquistar cluster, this uh, approximate and quasi crystal. And at least uh, maybe more than uh, 100 and six. It's, and, and a part of interesting properties, for example, you see the phase transition in the approximate and some interesting magnetic properties. And now this is ongoing in Japan. <coughs> okay, so he said I summarize the some stable quasi crystal. We have a uh, you know different in different. Uh, it we could, uh, this could be a classic classified by different kind of the cluster. So here, but no, uh, basically. The quasi crystal are a group of intermediates dominated by E of I. That's what we have. But of course, underneath, probably you have uh, some uh, a part of the contribution by the uh, hybridization or the uh, Fermi surface, interaction between the Fermi surface and the brilliant zones. But anyway, we just uh, use this to correct. And one important thing is that after Danny's discovery, and when we, we do this, the sum of the phase diagrams, and the sum of them, you see the unknown phase. It's happened already in, in the phase diagram. For example, the army copper ions and this one, uh, side phases. This has been uh, indicated uh, in the 1930s, but the, it just gave a question, no, no any information about structure. So as it happened, it actually is quasi crystal. So you see, that's the, if you face diagram and use the humerus iru, and the, you can dis discover so many quasi crystal. It's a very simple thing. That the, I think metallurgy we can do. And here I make a simple summary. And uh, well now we just show you, because most people are not, maybe not from this field, and uh, the quasi crystal is stable, and we can grow a single quasi crystal with the high uh, quality. And with this, we can study, uh, uh, for example, neutron scattering and also surface. And also from the, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, systematic inve investigation, we found that this quas uh, stable quasi crystal is a group of the uh, huron dozer electron intermediate compounds. And the, so far, we believe that this EOVA probably stabilized at the icocycle uh, <coughs> cluster. But this is this is also still ongoing. Okay, so uh, I come to the second part, the structure of the cadmium yttrium. And this is uh, we have developed for the last, uh, in the last few years. And of course, you know, the, the high dimension uh, method or technique to solve the structure has been established a long time ago, but still, we don't know where are atoms. And this is because not the, uh, the problem from the te te uh, methodology, but the problem is from the, the sample itself. But by the discovery of this binary stable quasi crystal, it allows us to solve the structure very precisely. So I'm sure that what's the, the, then 
uh, what's the, the, the role of this uh, binary quasi crystal? First, because so far we have a uh, most uh, stable quasi crystal are uh, uh, three uh, uh, ternary systems. For example, aluminum carbon ions. So you, for ternary system, if we have three elements, so it's more complicated. Okay, now we have a binary. So things become more simple. And then this uh, uh, some uh, chemical disorder in the structure. For, for example, the, in the uh, aluminum carbon ion uh, quasi crystal, the copper and ion, they, they, they uh, occupy, sometimes occupy the same atomic site. So in that case, we, it, when you solve the structure, it's difficult to distinguish from the uh, two, two uh, atoms. And this problem, but I, as I show you in the, in the class structure, the ytrobium and cartobium, they completely occupy the different uh, atomic site. So this uh, makes a difference. And then another is the latest, uh, latest the uh, diffraction contrast. For example, copper and iron is almost have the same number of the electrons. So it means it has the same uh, uh, contrast against the X-ray diffractions. So in that case, you cannot di distinguish where is copper, where is, where is iron. So this is another part. But you see the cadmium and ytrobium, they has quite a difference in this number of electrons. And then the other uh, main, main problem is that we don't have a very uh, valuable approximate. For example, this morning, uh, Walter mentioned about the, the uh, uh, approximate of the iron palladium manganese. But in that case, the, this, uh, the composition of approximate is quite uh, far away from the quasi crystal. So in that case, this, they can, we cannot guarantee that they, these two uh, uh, structures have the same eicosizer cluster. So that's it. But here you see the composition only, only difference just by one or two persons. And the other thing is that the, how to describe the, the structure. And this, I think, is what we progress in, in, this, uh, uh, in this structure. And before I come to uh, the structure, I just briefly mentioned about uh, the uh, idea of the uh, uh, approximate. So in quasi crystal, of course, we can just uh, design, use these uh, golden rectangles, okay? And you use the three rock, uh, uh, golden rectangles, you just uh, uh, mutually uh, perpendicular in the, along the centers. And then you, you have a shape. Of course, you have uh, automatically, you will have 12 vertex vertices. And the coordinates of vertices will be 0 tau 1 tau and 0 something like this. Okay, so actually, if we just uh, draw the lines, you will get this icosahedra. So it is just the idea of the, uh, the relationship between that icosahedron and the, and the some cubic lattice. And of course, in this case, for all the coordinates can be described by the, the matrix, something like one tau, zero tau, one zero. So this is the, uh, the, quasi, the case of quasi crystal. But uh, for approximate, okay, if we use the, the square, uh, do the same thing, again, then we will have another 12 vertices. And the, the coordinates of vertices will be something like one, zero, one, 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 zero. Okay, so if we draw the line, uh, uh, long list the vertex, we get the, this, uh, uh, cube or uh, octahedrons. Okay. In this case, the matrix to, disc, uh, to index, index this uh, uh, vertex will be like something like this. In this case, P and P Q is means one and one. So that could be three, two, or five, three, and it's something that fibo, uh, the ratio of the Fibonacci numbers. Okay. So, and the, the quasi crystal is here. So basically, the quasi crystal has the in the cluster and have the vertex something like this. It's just the idea. And in this case, still this quasi crystal have uh, icosahedral symmetry. But for appro approximate, probably they have, have a cluster in the, here. And even they have a icosahedral cluster, but still the, the structure still have a cubic symmetry. So for a long time, it has been be it's, it's, uh, believed that the, the, uh, the the uh, quasi crystal and approximate have the uh, I identical icosahedral cluster, because the and this is just assumption because no one no one demonstrates. But I think we we have also we proved that this in also in this uh, system. And then now we have the uh, quasi crystal and approximate. So here, uh, approximate structure has been has been well known, and you see the diffraction like this. And this is quasi crystal. We don't know structure. But if you compare that the diffraction pattern, they, you see the song's trump diffraction, they have a very good similarity. Okay, it means that they have some, something uh, similar in between these two structures. And okay, so now we start this uh, solve the structure, and in this, we don't normally we uh, use this process like this, but I think it's probably not easy to win. Many we were uh, 
mention these three parts, and I will use my way to explain. So first, we have to index the, all the deflections, okay? And deflections is just like a, 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 the, a, a, a word di a described this morning, it's a matrix, and then you, you can uh, divide the two, uh, two parts. One is a, a parallel space, and this other a perpendicular space. Okay, so first, once you, you index the, the first generation of the diffraction spot, so the next generation, what do you do? We need a, a transformation matrix to, to generate. Okay, and that, like this way, and of course, if you have some the uh, uh, extension rule, you have a spatial uh, this the uh, restriction of this uh, uh, transformation matrix. So, for example, this uh, along fivefold, you have a, a tau, tau three power is power three, three of power scaling, and along this is tau scaling. So, just like this way, and when you index all the the diffractions. And you, you, have to you can use the six dimensions to calculate the, the, the structure factor. And then, next step in, the, in this case, because you know, we use a, the phase reconstruction, it means uh, so-called the uh, low, low, uh, low density eliminations, just uh, a way to treat the uh, uh, in six dimension. But anyway, and, but we, we have to, to project to three dimensions to see what structure looks like. And this is the result, okay? I don't go to detail, but uh, here, and uh, this is uh, from six. This is two uh, two two dimension sections. So this along five of six, and this another uh, this a pair, uh, this pair, and this perpendicular. Okay. So then here, in six dimension, we have also the high symmetry uh, location one vertex, and this edge center, and this body center. Okay. Once and I would like to remind you, so you see. I say that the ytterbium and cardiobium have a very dif uh, different contrast again that X-ray. It's, it's also represented here. You see this, is this uh, uh, where the location with the strong, uh, strong density is represent the position of the ytterbium. Okay, and the weaker one is represent the uh, cardiobiums. So in, in that sense, so from the body center along the 5-4-X, we at about the 5.6 ohms from laser ytterbium atoms. On the other hand, we have another ytterbium atoms. So this we can operate by from different sections of the 5-4-X. So as, and we know, we realize actually here is a ytterbium icosahedral cluster. So we do the same thing for the 3-fold, and you see from body center and uh, along the 3-fold at the uh, R equal to 4.2 Armstrong, there's another ytterbium uh, atoms. So the other uh, opposite direction also the same one. So also we do the same thing, and we realize this, this here is a, is a, a cadmium uh, do, uh, uh, and here so again do the same thing at, along the two folds. Okay, so we have realized the at the position of the six point five ohms strong, we have the cadmium icosid dodecahedrons. So just I remind this is uh, what we obtain from the quasi crystal. And that's, that's, that's us compare with the approximate. Is that the same cluster? Okay, it's very clear here. And so, but the, here this is, anybody, this, this is a, a, a approximate. And okay, so now we have the, we, 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 uh, we identify, we uh, verify that the same class between the quasi crystal and, and the approximate. So next step, but the, the other problem is, you know, if we describe this, the icosahedral Ico, Ico, cluster until it is shear, there is another problem because in between the, the cluster, there are so many, so many atoms. Here we call the guru atoms. And you see, in this case, we cannot, so many atoms we cannot uh, define. So the problem, that's not what we progress. This has been uh, developed by uh, Gomez and, and Svenidin, and they extend the, this uh, at, uh, well, cluster to one more share. And they, then we have the aromic trichondohedrons. But in this case, we have to allow us the interpenetration of this of, of late uh, well, rhombohedron. Okay, so in this case, by doing this, at the, the approximate, the guru atoms, uh, in, 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 if we can see the cluster until, until this share, if we have about 60% of atoms are still guru atoms, we cannot define. But if we, we extend this one, so the guru atoms, so all the atoms could, could be defined by this cluster. So everything becomes really simple. Okay, so now again we come back to quasi So and to see, 
uh, by you that do the same thing, synthesizer from different directions, and and then we we have a two dimension the electron density map. It just imagine uh, you you cut along a, a class center, then you have a different uh, arrangement of the atom showing here. Okay, so actually this is uh, uh, from here. This is uh, a tritium agosahedrons, and here is the. Uh, uh, and here we see the rhombic trichonhedron, exactly also there. So it's been, this is the big cluster also it, we, we observed in the quasi crystal. So this is the first uh, uh, where demonstration, that's the, the same cluster we, we found in, in this, between uh, uh, quasi crystal and approximate. So now here we can decide the, the start cl cluster structure for quasi crystal. So next step, what, what, what we, we have to do is the to determine the position where the this uh, where uh, uh, agosahedral cluster should be, so by doing this, nobody has been uh, uh, empirically they've been studied in the army copper ion or army platinum manganese. It's already known that uh, the normal this cluster is located is quite high symmetry site. So in the three dimension panrostyling or amantinics, normally we have a trifold symmetry site. So if we locate this uh, agosahedral cluster, uh, rhombic trichondohedrons. You know, the, this here, the yellow ball is replaced at one cluster, okay? So, and then you see this arrangement, and he, it's formed a icosidodecahedron. And then this icosidodecahedron form another larger icosidodecahedron. Okay, so if you cut, uh, you see here, and the project to here, so he, uh, for, the, for the blue lines, this is like the B, is a, a point the two. And the, the large ones, which have a B, and multiple by tau with power of three. So it means there's a fractal structure with by, uh, uh, inflated by this uh, uh, tau with power of three. But most important thing is uh, after we, we analyze the structure, we found that almost 94% of the atoms are involved in this uh, cluster. So it means that we, the remaining 60% how to feel and how to, to describe this structure. So in this case, again, we need help from the uh, approximate, approximate is, uh, has been sold. Again, let's see that the, the, this 1-1 one, one approximate, here uh, this 1-1 uh, approximate, uh, as we mentioned, they have a penetration along 3-4 axis, so they have a linkage, which is co we call the C linkage, and here along 2 folds, they share the same planes. But anyway, uh, in the 1-1 one, one approximate, all the atom okay, of the, this uh, structure can be just de described by one cluster. But when, let's see what happened in, in the 2-1 approximate. In the 2-1 approximate, you see that in addition to these the, uh, rhombic trichondhedrons, we, have, we found that there is a cavity here. Okay? So it means we need another unit to fear. So in this case, this is an acute rhombohedron. Okay? So totally, in order to do the structure to describe the 2-1 approximate, at least we need these three units. Okay, so then we have to, we, we, in, in two one we have need, we need uh, the three these units. So let's see what's going on in the, uh, way in the three two approximate. This is just, uh, uh, imagine this the structure we, we, uh, we just the pro, uh, produced by projection from high dimensions because we have the structures and we just, and produce, uh, prepare this the uh, three two approximate. And if just uh, uh, fragged out inside, you see that there's some cavity, so here. Okay, and this cavity actually could be uh, decomposed to, you know, uh, yeah, now synthesized to, to, to a uh, double uh, fry of polyhedrons. And this is exactly nothing else. It's exactly the same as the acute dumbhedrons. So by inspecting the structure of the approximate in 2, 1, and 3, 2, what, anyway, we need the three unit cell. Three so units. One is a rhombic, rhombic trichondohedron, and the second one is a, it's a, a acute dumbhedron, and the other is the uh, update dumbhedron. So by use the, this the, uh, combinations, we know the position of the uh, cluster, so we just use this uh, to, to fill the cavity. And so finally, we, we got this uh, structure of the quasi crystal. Okay, so this the, the, the one uh, where the, uh, the part of in green, uh, green color is the uh, uh, cluster, rhombic trichondohedron, but here is the, the acute rhombohedron. It's like this. So here, summary tools. We uh, some of the structure. Okay, so this uh, is uh, precisely we we uh, we sort of we 
analyzed from the uh, more than 5,000 uh, uh, re independent reflections. And uh, for the structured equilibrium, we need the uh, rhombic trigonohedrons and the oblate uh, rhombohedron and also acute rhombohedrons. And we need to introduce uh, new ideas, interpenetration between us, the cluster in the structured descriptions. And, okay, and you see that we have a flat structure in, of these rhombic uh, trigonohedrons. And then it's interesting. It looks complicated, but uh, you know, it's binary. Why form such a complicated structure? But some, in, some case, in some sense, it's also so simple because, you know, I, I mentioned this, only 94% of atoms are, are already involved in the cluster. So if we, you, and for, for approximately, it's 100% just in cluster. So it's a kind of the way of, from one hand, uh, the end, one end is the quasi and the other end is one approximate. Uh, in between, probably something interesting in mathematics. So, Chairman, how, how much time do I have? You have five more minutes. Five more minutes? One. Four questions. <laughs> no, I think, uh, let me talk. I just quit for question. And then, we, because we have the structure models, and we use the same thing, we have the surface, and we use the structure model to, to understand what we observe in the surface. Okay, so I try to finish in five, five minutes. Yeah. And now, we can grow the single quartz crystal in intrim silver ytribiums. So as I mentioned, we have verified that the intrim ytribiums, uh, intrim silver ytribium is the same structure as the cadmium ytribiums. They also, we also obtain the same uh, quartz crystal, 200 approximate and 100 approximate. But here, we study the, this uh, quartz crystal along the 5 axis. And so this is uh, uh, the after sputter, the, the surface structure of the intrim silver ytribiums. And it's different from the atomic copper ions. Normally, it's formed uh, this uh, uh, crystal phase, but here it's diffuse. But after annealing, you see they have some diffuse, the uh, uh, tau scaling come up. And uh, if you annealing higher temperature, then you get the, oh, this uh, 5 fold simple diffraction patterns. That's here. But normally, these uh, sputters exhibit no uh, long, long range order, but this could be a retard, the quasi crystalline order could be. Uh, recovered by the anini. And just as the uh, similar anini-mix quasi crystal is we also observe the very uh, wide terrace. Okay, and the, the touch terrace is the same as the scale as the anini based quasi crystal. But uh, interesting is the, this also not the uh, periodic. It's something uh, different, uh, not periodic, but uh, this is not a, a Fibonacci sequence. But anyway, what, uh, two important things is, one important Thing is that the here we have a, a very frequency of the, you know, we, we observe very fre uh, frequently this S and R. Okay, so S is uh, just a two, uh, 0 0.28 nanometer and the R is the 0 0.85 nanometer. So these two, just keep in mind, we'll come back to this point. And okay, and then see the, the fine structure of this terrace. Okay, and uh, in this case, because the, we applied different uh, uh, bias, and we found that they have different structure. Okay, so if you uh, make Fourier transform, you see that uh, the, uh, they have the, the different, the, this uh, uh, image uh, is cited by different parts of diffractions. So it means they have some, uh, something different. If you look carefully, actually, for, for the, when the minus rays, you see that they, we have a, uh, where this uh, pentagon with the edge length about 2.5 nanos. And you see they have a okay, contrast at the corner. But on the other hand, when the, uh, the bias is plus, and you see the corner of pentagon is no, it's just a donut shape. So it's, it's very clear that the, the, this, uh, the, by change the bias, we see the different uh, image. And this is a, a change gradually. And you see from the uh, plus to minus, and again to plus. And that we show to here to compare again. This part is again, okay, showing here. So anyway, this is difference. And what, what's the difference of this the image? Because uh, that we just consider the, uh, the elements, I mean, the elements were used in this study. So in this has been uh, calculated by Paul Ishii, probably he will talk this tomorrow sometime. And uh, it, in this, he, in this academy, it remains the, it's been, as we know, it, it remains has the, where well, 5D unoccupied. And the, but catomium is uh, occupied uh, for 5P five, five uh, yeah, band. And in this case, uh, because the uh, catomium is replaced by intium and silver, so we believe that the intium and silver have the same elements. In that case, 
uh, because when the when the, in this case when the the, uh, the bias is is plus, it means that the, the electron from the tip will move to will turn into the uh, uh, sample. Okay, so in that case, it's been the unoccupied state. The, ele the electron will move from tip will move to the unoccupied site. In that case, what we see probably is something the position related to each of beams. But on the other hand, when the bias is minus, and uh, in that case, so the occupies uh, the state. Uh, the atom uh, occupied state will move on to the uh, 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 tips. So that's make difference. And so this in the SDS, we also observe this, uh, the same thing here. So we know, okay, so they, 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 by changing the bias, it's, it's, uh, the, 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 the different contrast that we observe is, is mean that we, we see the different atoms. And again, because we have the structure, and the, I, I mentioned that uh, the structure of between the cathode and ytrobium and in gym silver, it's the same, so we use the same structure. And we know we saw the structure, we have the, all the atomic coordinates, so we can just compare with the uh, structure model. So here again, just uh, in this morning, uh, Ward also mentioned us this uh, icosahedral quartz crystal. In some sense, you, it, it's a so layer structure. So he, here is the structure we look along the direction perpendicular to 5 fold axis. So you see, this is uh, some of the plan here. So the atoms, different atoms, replaced by the L. Here, I emphasize the blue one is uh, represent the cluster center. I mentioned the rhombic trick and hadrons. So, okay, let's see. This place have the, uh, place have the uh, class center with high density, uh, atomic density, okay, and in, in this, this layer. So, from some other layer, we also see that the, the, with at, um, but the low, low de atomic density, okay? so. For others, some here is, is more dense. So uh, normally, I, we believe that the, you know, the high atomic density will be more stable than others. But one more interesting is the, because if you look at, look at this, uh, the, the distance of between these cluster center <laughs> planes, okay, here is 8.2 ohm strong, and here is 2.4 ohm strong. And this, this distance is exactly what we observed in the beginning, the Taylor's length. Okay. So it's clear that the, what we, we observe the plane is exactly the, the plane of the class center and always come out to the, the surface. And then, I think the chairman is going to stand up just. Okay, uh, let me finish. Okay, this, slide. this slide and I finish. And, okay, so then we, uh, because the, we just compare with the uh, STM image, so here. And this structure model, we also can uh, find that this uh, pentagon with uh, edge length about 2.5 uh, nanometers is shown here, and we uh, uh, enlarge this part here. So for just let's see, when the bias is minus, okay, we see we have a contrast, you know, the corner showing here, and he, this part is exactly is the is in the silver atoms. It's what we have said, okay. Uh, but if the when the bias, you see the the outside of the silver, there is this uh, a ten, okay, ten atoms of ytterbium, and I'll share. And this is exactly corresponding to what we observe here. So it means by changing the right, uh, this bias, we see the ytterbium, sometimes we see the ytterbium. But anyway, this uh, uh, agree, agree well with the structure model. Anyway, it's verified. Okay, so I just show here. We also try to, to produce a single element quasi crystal. This is one example, it's a leader. And also, this, uh, I don't go to detail, it's also. Uh, uh, demonstrated that the structure model is correct. So 